Hello, this is Dr. Nurse Storms in her office, um, in my office, going over an NMR problem in case you're having trouble with your NMRs. So I drew this rather uh, crude looking NMR on my board. The NMR has a peak at 9 ppm, 7 ppm, it has two, two sets of peaks at around 7 ppm. It has a multiplet at around 3.8 parts per million and it has a very nasty looking doublet at around one part per million. The peak at zero is of course the reference compound called tetramethylsilane. This compound has the formula C10H12O. Okay, you will recall from class that the first thing you should do in solving your NMR spectrum is to write down the saturated formula. So this is the real formula, okay, the actual formula, and I'm going to write above that the saturated formula. The saturated formula for this compound is C10H what? 2N plus 2. So it'll be 22 O. Oh, remember from class that oxygen doesn't do anything to change the saturated formula. The difference between these two is 10 divided by 2 equals 5. And you should really come and see me if you don't understand how to do that because I had a feeling a couple days that people weren't really getting that. What does 5 mean? 5 mean, could mean, could mean 5 double bonds. It could mean 2 triple bonds plus 1 double bond. And I could go on and on and on from there. It could be five rings, okay? It could be one benzene plus one ring or something like that. There's all different kinds of combinations that that could be, okay? We're going to figure it out by looking at the spectrum. But remember what we said in class, a very high unsaturation, an unsaturation above 4 could indicate a benzene ring. We had said in class that benzene is one ring plus three double bonds, and that adds up to a loss of four pairs of hydrogen. I'm being my own camera person today, so I'm not doing such a good job. So again, let's look at our spectrum. There's a peak at nine part per million that has an area of one. I give you the areas right above the peak. It's the smallest whole number ratio. Occasionally, it has to be converted into the real and it has to be converted into a, a higher number once it's compared to the formula. Around seven parts per million, we have two doublets, each integrating to two. Okay, Around 3.8 parts per million, we have a rather nasty looking multiplet. And remember what I said in class about multiplets. Just call them multiplets. Don't try to overinterpret them. It just means we have one near many. At one part per million, we have a big doublet that has an area of six, and then we have the reference compound, which is TMS, tetramethylsilane, this compound. This compound. Okay. Um, as I said in class, we usually add tetramethylsilane to a sample, and then we do everything relative to that. We set that at zero parts per million, and the other peaks are relative to that. Part per million are proportional to frequency units. Now I'm going to set up my little table that I used in class. And you'll see me writing this for a second. This, and, you know, if you got weary during class, maybe this will help you get started on the problems. Okay, and if you'll recall, my first column in the table is delta, and delta is the ppm. The second column is integral, which is area. Okay, the third column is splitting. 
and then in the fourth column I draw some kind of a conclusion. Okay. All right, what's my first peak? My first peak, of course, is at zero. That's just TMS. I don't really care about that. The next real peak from the sample is at one part per million. So I'm going to write one. The area is written above the peak. It's six. What is the splitting pattern here? Even though it's nasty looking, I hope you can see it's, it's a very wiggly looking doublet. Okay, I hope you can see that's a doublet. Big doublet. This is the hallmark of a certain group that you see frequently in organic compounds. So I write down splitting doublet. Don't write two. Okay, write doublet because that distinguishes it from the area. Remember, the area tells you what is here, the splitting tells you what is near. How do you interpret this? Well, the most probable way to have six identical hydrogens is two methyl groups that are identical by symmetry. So I'm going to draw a methyl, another methyl, okay? So I have two methyls that are the same by symmetry. It's okay for me to write them opposite to each other, but I don't want to attach them because they've, these have got neighbors or neighbor, okay? But I know they're at the ends of the molecule because these are terminal groups. What are they next to? The splitting tells you what is near. You see one more than the number of adjacent but different hydrogens. So, what do I do? I draw a carbon. Remember, the neighbor has to live in a house, and the house is usually made of carbon. I write in a carbon, and then I put an H on it. That's the neighbor. This is what I've observed. The ones I'm circling are the ones I've observed. This is the neighbor. This guy, the one I'll put the triangle around, is the neighbor. Okay? There's one more connection on this fragment. This is a terminal fragment overall. I am very confident we have this group. It's called an isopropyl group. Okay, next. Next peak in, this, in the spectrum is this multiplet. It has an area of 1. It's at about 3.8 parts per million. So I'm going to write 3.8 area 1. This is the area. Splitting, don't overinterpret that because you could make a mistake and it'll lead you astray. I'm just going to write multiplet the splitting. Okay, what is this? This is one hydrogen like this near many. Okay, near many. One hydrogen near many. Where have we seen that already? We've already seen this hydrogen. This hydrogen here that I'm observing is the hydrogen that was implied through the splitting up here. So this fragment is really just verification that we do indeed have the isopropyl group. Continuing along, okay, I would go down to this peak at 7. And I said in class, though it looks to be fast, it's usually best to use, it's usually best to use chemical shift last, okay, but sometimes you jump right on a chemical shift and 7 is an indication of aromatic. Now what's different about this one in the from the one we did in the class is that there's actually two groups of peaks in the aromatic zone. This means we have two different types of hydrogen on the aromatic ring. This is going to be very useful to us. The total number of hydrogens on the aromatic ring is 4. So I'm going to write over here that I have a group of 2, okay, and a group of two, two different groups of two, each of which are doublets. Doublet. Okay? So again, this is a little strange. This is not a quartet. This is two doublets. Okay? And that is because you can see they are, there's a larger distance in the middle than on the two outer peaks. These are two doublets. They're all aromatic, and they're probably all in the same benzene ring, given the small structure that we have, okay? The, f the completion of this solution will be on the next video. YouTube has been limited to 10 minutes, okay? See you in the next video. Bye.